So hello and welcome to another video. Um, I know I haven't filmed in a while. I've been transitioning to grad school and moving in and getting settled with my work and everything. Um, so a lot more to come on that. But I was doing some work and I was using Scholar GPT to help me out and I was like, oh, this could be a really good video idea. So I just wanted to come on and um, show you guys how I use Scholar GPT for my work, um, specifically for like analyzing scientific articles. Um, this is super, super basic and it's definitely not like a full overview of Scholar GPT. This is just personally how I use it and I don't use it too often. I really only use it like if I have a large volume of papers to get through or if a paper is like particularly dense and I'm not as interested in the subject material. But typically like I will read through the papers, like the abstract discussion and conclusion. Um, but again, like if I'm short on time or like I'm just not as interested, then I will throw it into Scholar GPT and I'm going to show you how I do that now. So let's head over to my laptop. Okay, so if you guys don't know how to get to Scholar GPT, um, please just ignore all of my tabs. I know I have an issue. Um, so we're just going to type in chat GPT. And it might prompt you to log in, um, but then once you log in or create an account, um, it will have this little explore GPTs on the side. And so they'll give you like different types of GPTs, one that'll like write content for you, which is pretty cool, one that'll help you code, one that creates diagrams. Um, and so all these are super helpful in terms of like thesis research or just classwork in general. But I'm going to show you how to basically use Scholar GPT. And so it'll give you a few little prompts like find the latest research about whatever or providing a research paper link and then it'll analyze it. So I'm just going to show you how I would use this, um, just one example, for my thesis research. So sometimes what's important to note is that Scholar GPT can access scientific articles, but sometimes um, there's like a firewall around them and so it can't actually access the link. And so what you're going to want to do is first download it, like whatever the article is, to your computer as a PDF. And you can just upload it from your computer. And so I have like all of my related papers in one folder and I'm just going to select this one. And um, this paper, which I have open here, is quite long but it is like very dense and because I have like so many papers to analyze it can be a lot so this is just a good way to kind of break down the paper and see what's important within it um, specifically for you so I'm just going to type in like summarize the discussion and conclusion portions of this paper and this will just give me a like broad general overview of what the paper is going to talk about. Um, but of course, like I always read the abstract myself um, and a little bit of the introduction material, just because um, like I want to see first if this paper is worth you know like doing this for, and then I also just want to see like what portions of the paper might be important for me. Um, and I also will just look over the discussion and conclusion briefly to see like the sections that is broken down into any graphs, any charts that are important to note. Um, but yeah, so then once I take it in here, um, look at the discussion, the conclusion, and see like generally what it talks about. Um, so for this particular paper, I'm interested in nutrient loads. And so I'm looking at seasonal biological trends. I'm kind of going to like ignore this section for now um, and like benthic pelagic coupling so I'm just really going to look at the seasonal trends. So I can see here that it talks about like high primary production and so that's related to nutrients so we can type in something like well okay actually I want to get a little bit more specific on nutrients so I'm just going to type in does the paper talk about nutrient loads or nutrients within the ecosystem. Okay, cool. So now it's going to break down the paper into all of the parts where it talks about nutrients specifically. So we're kind of starting broad and then we're getting a little bit narrower. So depending on what my paper talks about, um, either of these sections can be important for me to further look into. 
I'm specifically interested in like hypoxia and eutrophication, but I know that this paper isn't really going to talk about that. But I am interested to see like um, patterns of nutrient recycling because this paper specifically talks about the recycling of organic matter, including nutrient regeneration. Um, basically, not really important for this video, but um, my paper is specifically looking at the impact of nutrient recycling as one of the factors in eutrophication. So I'm going to type in um, what are the implications of nutrient recycling. And then it will further break that down into a more narrow focus of what I want. So you can see here that basically I started off super broad with summarize the discussion and conclusion portions, saw that it was talking about high primary production and like seasonal patterns. So I wanted to look more specifically about nutrient loads and nutrients within the ecosystem. Um, and then it broke that down for me a little bit further. And then I narrowed it even more to talk about nutrient recycling and the implications of that within the ecosystem. So let's say that, okay, I'm looking this over. So I'm specifically interested in sediment particulate organic carbon, which I'm not, but we're just going to pretend for the sake of this video. So I'm going to go back to the article, press control F um, to search for the keyword. So we have sediment particulate organic carbon. And Scholar GPT definitely pulled this out of the paper, so we're just going to give it a second. Okay, I just refined it to say sediment um, because sometimes it abbreviates as, as sediment POC. And so it's pulling up a lot of this keyword within the paper. Um, so there's going to be a lot of things not related to what I'm looking for, but just we can kind of go along um, and look through the keywords and then I can pull out specifically, see it like sediment POC specifically what I'm looking for. Then it also bring you to like specific figures. But yeah, so basically this is just a really good way to narrow your focus down. So we basically went discussion conclusion, um, saw what was in there, picked out a specific topic, and then narrowed it down to a specific keyword that I was then able to type in and search the sections of the paper for what I specifically want. We could do this with any keyword. And okay, so let's say I wanted to learn more about this. So we could say, what does this paper say about detritus utilization? And what are the implications of this? Okay, so then key role in energy flow, but then it gets into it a little bit more. So it'll talk about um, specific things about detritus. Um, linking it again to sediment. Cool. Okay. So then it gives me all of these topics that I can then look into in the paper or, you know, find other sources as well. So again, if I'm interested in any of these specifically, oh, look at that eutrophication and hypoxia. That's what I'm studying. So excessive detritus from eutrophication can lead to hypoxic conditions, particularly in bottom waters, impacting detritus consuming organisms. Great. Okay. So I'm actually going to use that in my notes. Um, bring that over here okay so yeah i do like copy and paste it into just a giant document and then later i like go back and kind of refine it i'm gonna make a whole separate video about how i write my papers um but for now like i'm just gonna copy and paste it so i have it with me okay i'm actually just gonna go to the paper and i'm gonna type in hypoxic and i'm just gonna see what comes up okay so nothing actually came up so i don't know <laughs> where it got that. Oh, okay. Let's see, eutrophication. Okay. So, it does talk about eutrophication here. Um, so if I really wanted to, I can, like, go back and then read about what it says about eutrophication. Um, it might have just also, like, extrapolated it from other sources on the internet, so if I was really curious then, what I might also do is say, give me um, other papers related to detritus, eutrophication, and hypoxia. And so this way, it'll just give me some other sources that I can use as future references. And then great, it just gave me two papers, which is nice. And then of course, you can always just use, what the heck? 
Oh, I thought that was in another language. Um, so then you can also use these papers. Oh, this is 2024. Um, and look at the references and then, you know, go from there and find other papers. But this is just a good way to kind of get things right away. And keep in mind, you can only use ChatGPT like um, a certain amount. I actually used it quite a bit, so I got a lot out of it today. Um, but then you can also just log in on a different account and like just use it on a different account, basically. So yeah, I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions and I will be sure to get back to you in the comments. I read all the comments and I'm going to be starting a new series on thesis research, um, a little thesis survival guide. And I'm probably going to talk about like some helpful websites that I use to find papers, um, helpful study guides, how I motivate myself to like start writing um, and what that looks like. So I'm also going to talk about how I organize my papers, um, which I use Notion. So if you guys are interested in any of that, make sure you subscribe, um, leave a comment letting me know if you want to see anything else or what you want to see specifically. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like this video so I know to make more and I will see you guys in the next video.